So this uh, video is about the lactate system. It's the third of our videos on energy systems. And you'll remember from previous videos that we've talked about how the body has three different pathways by which it resynthesizes ATP. And ATP, of course, is the currency uh, that has to be used in the muscle cells in order to provide energy for muscular contraction. The muscles won't contract unless we can break down ATP. But ATP doesn't last very long, so we have to have different ways of resynthesizing, remaking, uh, topping back up the stores of ATP in the muscle. And the body has three ways of doing this. We've looked previously at the ATP PC system. Uh, and in this video, we're going to look at the lactate pathway, sometimes called the lactic acid system. So lactate pathway in this uh, in this video. The lactate system works basically by using glycogen or glucose as the fuel to restore ATP. So to take ADP and to find energy from somewhere to resynthesize ATP out of ADP. And the process is known as glycolysis. Um, and the word glycolysis is a compound word. The lysis part of the word means breaking down and the glyco part of the word just indicates what is being broken down. So glycolysis means the breakdown of glycogen or glucose, which are similar, similar things, similar compounds. Similar to the ATP PC pathway, the lactic acid pathway, this lactate system is also anaerobic and that simply means that no oxygen is required to provide energy in the lactate system. So it's an anaerobic system that uses the process of glycolysis to provide energy for ATP resynthesis. So to summarize the system before we get into specifically how it works, we can say that the, the system type is an anaerobic glycolysis system. That is, it's without oxygen, breaking down glucose. The fuel source therefore is glycogen and glucose. Glycogen is simply the stored form of glucose. In terms of its duration, this system predominates, it kicks in, it's, it comes to the fore after the ATP PC system has started to be depleted. So after about 10 seconds, lasting for up to about two minutes, depending on the kind of training and the kind of adaptations in that person's physiology um, and anatomy that have previously occurred, we might get up to two minutes, maybe a touch more um, use out of the lactate system. Um, in terms of recovering the system, um, it takes a couple of hours until the system is completely uh, recovered. Um, ready to be used and, and topped back up to its uh, to its optimum level. And so this is a really useful system for stop start games, for field sports, court sports, where there are intervals where um, lactate that has built up in the blood can be broken down. But at the same time, the intensity of the actual play can potentially be so great that the, there is not enough oxygen available to meet the demands. So tennis would be a really good example where there's lots of short sharp phases of play interspersed with little breaks where the system can start to replenish itself. We'll think more about how the systems fit together and how they uh, interplay in a later video. So how does the lactate system actually work? So first off, uh, from the point that we left off uh, with, the AT with the role of ATP, um, let's begin with the fact that ATP now requires resynthesizing. And so this system um, uses glucose, which is a kind of sugar. Uh, it's a fairly simple sugar, which is present in the bloodstream. And also glycogen, which I've already mentioned, is the stored form of glucose, which is present in both the muscle cell and also in the liver. So we have these three places where we can get glucose from for the purposes of breaking it down, for the purposes of glycolysis within the lactate system. It might come from the bloodstream, it might come from the liver, and it may come from the muscle cell itself. Essentially, glucose or glycogen is then broken down with the help of certain en enzymes, which speed up the process, 
the glucose is broken down and the energy that is released from the breakdown of glucose is then used to resynthesize ATP. As a byproduct, um, pyruvate is produced. And in the lactate system, when pyruvate is produced, because there is no oxygen to make use of that pyruvate, and when we get onto our next video, when we talk about the aerobic system, we'll see what happens to pyruvate. But in this case, there's no oxygen available. So pyruvate dissociates, that is, it breaks down and forms lactate. And we'll talk about the problems of that in just a moment. But essentially, since pyruvate is produced as a byproduct, and because there's no oxygen available, that pyruvate is converted into lactate and that lactate is then passed into the bloodstream so the blood itself begins to fill up with lactate in terms of the production or, or the yield of energy typically um, one glycogen molecule when it's broken down provides enough energy to be able to resynthesize approximately three new ATP molecules so that's how the system works. So what are the benefits? What are the disadvantages? So the key benefits are simply, first of all, that no oxygen is required. It's an anaerobic system. And so it can be used without needing, again, similar to the ATP PC system, without needing to supply a large additional amount, additional volume of oxygen. Energy can pr be produced quickly. Second benefit is it produces a greater yield of ATP than the ATP PC system. Um, one molecule of glycogen produces somewhere in the region of three ATP molecules, whereas you'll remember from the ATP PC system, it was a one to one ratio. The other third benefit, the other, the other benefit here um, is that it lasts for longer. So up to a couple of minutes we can be providing energy for muscular movement, muscular contraction for a couple of minutes. So it lasts a lot longer than the ATP PC system. But then obviously a disadvantage associated with that is that it only lasts for a few minutes. So if you have sports that are uh, demanding a high energy um, demand, that have a high energy demand, um, you're going to have to supply that energy um, maybe partly from the lactate system, but partly from other systems as well. One of the key issues with the lactate system, though, is when the lactate ends up in both the muscle and in the bloodstream, it starts to affect the level of acidity in the muscle. That is, the muscles and the blood become more acidic. And we get somewhere in the region of 25 times the resting level of muscle acidity after about two minutes of all out effort. So if you're flat out effort, maximal effort for about two minutes, by the end of those two minutes, there'll be 25 times the level of acidity in your muscle um, at the end of those two minutes. Um, and the problem with that is, um, though there are various different theories as to exactly how this works, there are suggested at least these problems. Firstly, it may well, that lactate, that acidity in the muscle may well inhibit the breakdown of more glycogen. So therefore preventing further glycolysis. So therefore limiting the availability of further energy. Secondly, it may well prevent the enzymes that sped up that reaction. It may prevent them from working effectively. And thirdly and finally, it may well interfere with muscular contraction. That The acidity itself may confuse the muscle at a chemical level so that it doesn't contract as effectively or as efficiently and certainly not with as much force. So that can have the impact of making it feel like your muscles are heavy and that you're sort of running through treacle, that kind of, uh, that kind of feeling. and may well be a result of lactate buildup in the muscle. So that's it for the lactate system. Hope that's been of help. Um, leave comments below uh, if you would like to, uh, but thanks for listening.